to take a class in order to be married? Should it be a law? That's what we're going to discuss this morning on Focus. Our guests are Dr. Paul Freed, who is the founder of Marriage Makers, and a couple who has been through the seminar, Kristen and Lynn Greer. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. The, there's a proposal on the floor of the house to make it a law that, well, a law that couples can opt out of, we, must, we should add, to have counseling, required counseling for anyone who wants to get married or divorced in the state of Florida. Marriage Makers is part of a new trend that we've noticed, people getting counseling before marriage on an intensified level other than through the church. Now, you, now Marriage Makers is religious based, but how long have you been doing this and how successful is it? Well, thank you, Annette. First of all, it's a real joy to be here. And uh, we've been doing the conferences since about 1983 on a public format. Uh, and I'd say successful. We've had a number of thousands uh, of couples come through. We don't, however, primarily do it just for premarital counseling. We do it for all married couples. Uh, so a lot of singles will come to our conference as well as marrieds. And we have even have some couples come that have just celebrated their diamond anniversary. And so it's a, the broad spectrum of marriage we're wanting to touch. Now, you're, um, you're our guinea pigs this morning, so we're going to ask you, and just pretend Dr. Freed isn't here so you can really tell us in this life. You've been married for two years? Two years right. this June. What was the seminar like? For us, it was hope. Um, we both came from wonderful families. Um, we were married, and we just, because of circumstances, we were, you know, living our own lives. And we went to the seminar and we saw ourselves as a couple again. We're discovering each other. Um, so we have did you, hope. Did you go because you were having some rough times and wanted to we kind of... We weren't fighting, but we knew we needed to fix things now before they got worse, before they got to um, something horrible like separation. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted to fix it. Lynn, tell us what happens in the seminar? What, do you, what does Dr. Freed do? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's primarily geared towards, or it's been our experience, that um, as we attended the seminar, the conference, the two-day conference, um, it was more towards, the focus was on ourselves and on also each other. And it was more intensified towards the relationship with each other, with our, with our marriage and um, the covenant that we had made and also towards uh, what we could do for preventive medicine and also curative medicine. Okay. Being married for two years, not a lot happens, you know, so um, we wanted to make sure that all the pitfalls that we would uh, soon encounter, we could have an opportunity to, um, to, to address them before it happened, absolutely. What are some of those pitfalls that you help people try to avoid? Well, certainly, Annette, uh, the, uh, the big three uh, uh, causes of marital breakdown are in-laws, finances, and sex. And so we certainly address those. And sometimes people will reverse the order depending right. on the marriage, right? <laughs> I didn't give it in priority. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we do try to certainly touch those three areas. But not just that. We wanted to really communicate uh, the whole issue of the fidelity of marriage, the purity of marriage, and the joy of marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's so much uh, almost an unspoken kind of a mentality that once you're married, life kind of just becomes leveled out and begins to be drudgery. And we like to have couples excited about marriage and seeing that marriage is something to really uh, enjoy. But if you have a couple who's coming in and this couple is having problems, mm -hmm. I mean, we're talking on the verge of saying, let's forget the whole thing. How can you help them reconnect in a two and a half hour seminar? Right. A lot of people would say, oh, this is more this, this you know, let's get a quick fix, let's go in and get counseling and we can fix it. My parents didn't do this, my p grandparents didn't do this, you're supposed to stick it out. Marriage is supposed to be hard. <laughs> How do you answer that? <laughs> Well, marriage can be difficult. There's no question about that, but I don't think marriage is supposed to be hard. Uh, we're wanting to have the couple concentrate more on their spouse than themselves. Now, not that self-awareness is not important in understanding themselves, but certainly the perspective of your spouse. Where they, what do they bring into the marriage? What are they seeing in the marriage? What are, what are their ambitions and hopes and dreams for the marriage? And so we're trying to get the individual to take his eyes off, or her eyes off herself, and put it on the, the broader institution of marriage and also particularly on their spouse. What do you do to help that happen? Walk us through the seminar. Couple comes in or single person sure. comes in. What are they going to get? Well, certainly it, 
they're going to get a broad spectrum. Now we start, believe it or not, with the woman. And we have a little saying that brides are first women. And so we talk about the uniqueness of womanhood. And we begin with that. And then we go on to talk about expression and to express how you care, how you feel in the marriage. Mm -hmm. And now that we're just talking about Friday night, and it is a two-day conference we do. And then we end with dwelling on your lover's good is our third maxim. We build through actually 12 marriage maxims throughout mm -hmm. the conference. And so we're trying to get the couple to find the positive in their spouse, find the positive in their marriage, and what dwell on that. What if they say, there's nothing positive <laughs> left, I've looked, it's not there. Right. It's a, very, it's a very good point. And the reason we're wanting them to exercise their mind and will and heart to do this is we think that in any marriage, there are going to be some positive things. It's not fair to plead temporary insanity on wedding day. Okay. You know, there are some things positive, and if, if we can find them, and we actually work with trying to find those positives, we'll build on that, and then take that into the next morning, which usually is on a Saturday, and we work through the positive, and then looking to find answers to the negatives. Not in uh, avoiding the negatives, but wanting to address the specifics of finding positives out of the negatives. What was the biggest pri surprise to the two of you when you went to marriage makers what did you get that you didn't expect to get it's an experience you have to experience for yourself you, you can't explain it um, I would like to say this that I had a fairy tale wedding we had a fairy tale wedding and on the re in the recommitment ceremony at the very end we were in jeans and t-shirts no makeup hair in a ponytail <laughs> and now at, at marriage makers I'm sorry <laughs> Um, in the recommitment ceremony, and that was more touching, more deep, more emotional hmm. than the whole wedding day. Than the whole wedding day. It changed our lives forever. Well, when we come back, we're going to talk about exactly how you do that in the seminar, what actually happens okay. in the seminar. We're talking about marriages, how to make them stronger, how to keep them together. Stay with us. Welcome back to Channel 6 News Focus. Our focus this morning is marriage. There is a bill proposed in the Florida House requiring couples to take a four-hour course before getting married or getting divorced in the state of Florida. With us this morning is Dr. Paul Freed, who is the founder of Marriage Makers, and two of the seminar attendees from the Marriage Makers Conference, Kristen and Lynn Greer. Uh, when we left off, you were talking about how Marriage Makers had helped you recommit to your marriage. Uh, can you tell us what actually happens in that seminar? What are some of the exercises you go through? Well, uh, when we arrive, we receive a packet. Um, and for the women, there's a booklet for the women. And we take our own notes, our own thoughts on points that Dr. Freed brings up. Also, Mrs. Freed stands up, and she gives a beautiful um, talk about um, uh, the, the, the woman's side of marriage. And then the men go through the same thing. And then the, the men thing, go right? through the same thing. And then uh, Dr. Freed has a time in the conference that we have what uh, is called a walk in a garden. And we, as a couple, we go off into a quiet place alone and we compare notes and okay. we start meeting in the middle. Um, Can that cause problems sometimes, Dr. Freed? You've been doing this for a while. <laughs> has, has that walk in the garden turned into a walk in the briar patch <laughs> <laughs> on occasion? Well, we're not afraid of them bringing up issues, and we're not afraid of addressing real life issues, and I think that is important. But what we're trying to get the couple to do is to not just address them, but to come with answers for their own marriage and for themselves out of the input they've gotten. We've talked pretty comprehensively about communication, for instance, in the conference. We've addressed the issues of finances, in-laws, outlaws. Is there a difference? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes there's not. Okay. Uh, we've addressed lovemaking. I like to call it lovemaking because I think it comes out of an entire walk with, uh -huh. it, with each other. It's not just a sex, not just an isolated act. It's a whole marriage, a whole walk together. <laughs> and so we're looking for them to not only look at these issues, but to really apply them into their own marriage. Now, interesting question. Have you ever had a couple go through this and decide we're not right for each other. This is not going to work. And I'm glad we did this before we found out. Has that ever happened? The answer is yes. And as I said, we do have a number of singles or engaged couples come. 
and they look at this thing and they say, wow, marriage is a real commitment. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm happy that they see it that way because it certainly is. It involves children, it involves their future, it involves all of their life together. And we have had couples go into the conference and, and leave and say, no, this is not for us. However, that is the exception. We'd rather see them in a positive way, approaching marriage with understanding, with real insight of what they're going to be facing in marital issues so they can be building together on their future. We talk about having marital goals, for instance, mm -hmm. and how they, they need to be specific goals, goals for children, the way to bring up children, uh, but not just for the kids, for themselves, okay. and as they approach marriage to have marital goals. Has this, did this seminar helped you look at your marriage differently, and if so, how? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, what do you do now that you didn't do before? One night a week. <laughs> <laughs> That is yes. a law. Okay. Uh, if it has to be a morning, it's a morning, a sacred. Um, one day a month is ours alone, no children. Together, nothing. Together, no, don't, you know, Completely watching movies. Completely isolated. Um, to kind of communicate and communicate. Right. Right. We're right. catching up with each other. What's going on in your life that's important to you? And you, you, and you find didn't? yourself through the whole conference concentrating on the other one and then and then you start seeing, wow, this is how I can help him, and it's, it's a, a two-way street. So. Dr. Free, we're going to put the phone number up for Marriage Makers sure. while I ask you your reaction to trying to legislate something like marital counseling. What's your opinion on that? Well, you can make it law, but you can't really change people's hearts. If they go into the counseling with an open mind, an open heart to really learn and to really be taught, I think it's a whole different concept and a whole different premise than if you are making them do it and they're sitting there very begrudgingly going through four hours looking at their clock waiting for it to be over. Mm -hmm. They won't get anything out of it. But if they go with an open heart, an open mind to really build a marriage or if you're coming out and you're on the other side of it, as you know, the Bill 1019 that, that both Stephen Wise and, and uh, Elaine Bloom are sponsored. And by the way, I salute them. As you're coming out of a marriage, they're looking at divorce, if they go in really wanting to know what are the issues, then I think they can learn much. But if it's just legislated, if something's put on them, it's, it's not, not going to happen. happen. Thank you all for being with us. And we Thank hope you. we've given people something to think about. And maybe you'll get a few phone calls, too. Thank you, Annette. It's good to be here. <laughs> Thank you for joining us for this edition of Channel 6 News Focus. We'll be right back.